At 9.30am on the 17th of September 2014, two SA Power Networks employees in a Fassie crane towing a pole trailer were turning right into a private property three kilometres north of Rainy on the Horrocks Highway. Despite having the amber beacons on and the indicators signalling their intentions, the crane was struck on the right-hand front of the cabin by a B-double grain truck which had attempted to pass on the right. The fully loaded B-double had crossed double white lines in the passing manoeuvre and was estimated to be travelling between 80 and 90 kilometres an hour. A third member of the crew had gone ahead of the crane to open the gate to the property and was fortunately not involved in the collision. This is their story. The job for the day was to install a low voltage uh, prop pole. Nothing wrong with the driving conditions and it was a nice sunny day like today. First job of the day. And yeah, we pretty much came to the job site and we knew it was a troubled corner. There's a lot of accidents happened here. So um, we pulled up down the road and uh, let Doggy go first and just uh, open the gate and make sure it's all clear to enter. We, um, we had a service pole to erect up here by the sheds just to uh, raise the height of the uh, service wire. We were in the process of getting the, the crane and the pole trailer in, in here to to erect that and uh, then all hell broke loose basically. It's a, obviously a double white line road, no overtaking. Um, it's quite a dangerous corner. Behind me there's a blind corner where that was where most of our concern was when we were pulling into the property where trucks or cars can get a big speed up and yeah, quite a dangerous road. I was mainly just looking forward because that's where the um, where you can't see the traffic very well coming towards us and I didn't want to, you know, turn into any traffic. I said to the boys who were in the, in the crane, I'll get you to pull up up the road um, some distance before we get near the property and I'll open the gates and uh, make sure we get the crane and the pole trail and everything into the job site. Um, because I couldn't get Nick on the uh, mobile phone because the service here was a little bit average. So I got back out and checked traffic either way and waved Nick on down to uh, to proceed down. So uh, Doggy did that and gave us okay and we travelled down the road and as we were pulling in a truck tried to overtake us and clipped the front of the truck. When we went to turn the corner, obviously having great concern about the blind corner where we approached the corner quite slowly turning and then the truck came through and cleaned us up out of nowhere. I only got probably about 20 metres through this gateway and heard this almighty bloody bang and uh, saw a blue B-double truck fly past me on the left in this paddock into the dam. That was pretty, pretty well damaged and uh, we had taken out a large gum tree just over here. And I thought to myself then, my bloody God, he's, he's just taken out the lads in the crane. And uh, yeah, I, was, I didn't want to get out of the car for a minute because it looked, looked be pretty ugly. Yeah, I had no warning. Well, I checked my mirrors. Mick was, was looking to his left, making sure it was all clear and didn't even see him. Only thing I heard was the glass breaking and then saw the truck into the paddock, so I had no warning at all. Instantly, just thinking the worst, I'd, I just remember checking both my arms and legs were still intact and then quickly saw Tony and then we, we ran over and just all our concern was on the other driver who ended up in the dam. To my uh, astoundment, Nick and Mick were both sitting in the crane and, and I could hear Nick saying, what the bloody hell was that? And uh, yeah, I was so glad to see him <laughs> alive and, uh, and not, not majorly injured. So yeah, I was very pleased to, to see him in that state. I had no accelerator left in the truck, so that's as, as close as it was. So it could have been just a split second earlier, or so later, and could have been catastrophic, really. The crane, the trailer and everything was jammed up. The brakes seized up on the on the truck because it cut all the airlines and so forth, so we couldn't shift that off the road. So we had quite a dangerous situation sitting here. Managed to get on to triple zero, and uh, yeah, they, they dispatched all the relevant police and ambulance and so forth. Fortunately enough, we had a bystander managing traffic from that side, and uh, so we jumped in the light vehicle and took up around, off up around the corner, and. Warning that there's a serious situation around the corner. 
at the time, I honestly was just surprisingly calm. <laughs> it was all quite numb because it just happened so fast. It's more afterwards when you, you, you go away and think about what could have happened and it sort of plays in your mind a bit and the sounds of, of trucks whistling past now, it's almost a bit hard, hard so yeah. Rude awakening to, uh, to all of us. Um, it did shake us all up a fair bit too. I was, yeah, very relieved to, to see him alive and not uh, seriously injured or even killed for that fact. I almost felt like kissing them actually, but... <laughs> As you've no doubt concluded that Nick and Mick were very fortunate to escape injury. It's a fine line that separates those who get to tell their story and those that don't. The subsequent investigation showed that the B-double driver attempted to illegally overtake the crane at high speed across double white lines and less than 100 metres before a blind corner. As you saw from that video, road incidents can have a lasting impact. But in any event, it's worth reflecting on some of the key learnings that have come out of the Rhiney crash. Firstly, it's about keeping aware of what's going on at all times and being alert for other drivers. They don't always do the right thing. The crew in this crash took steps to include the journey in their risk assessment. And this should happen as a matter of course with every job. As part of that process, it's worth considering additional traffic management when undertaking manoeuvres on high-speed roads. <coughs> well, you know, having two close mates like that, young lads, that... I, I didn't think I was going to see them. And, uh, yeah, even now, it sort of mm, shakes me up a bit. If you have any feedback or have any ideas you'd like included in this DVD series, please feel free to contact George Carlos, Andrew Sloan or your allocated work health and safety consultant. <laughs>